Hello, my name is Ertu Saraiva. I am currently a PhD student from the University of Lisbon and an assistant professor of Santarém Polytechnic University. First, I would like to thank you, the organizing committee, for the opportunity to present my work regarding strategies for carbon footprint reduction of wine production. I would also like to acknowledge my co-authors and PhD supervisors. As we all know, the past and current use of resources has put great pressure on our planet. It is therefore important that we make sustainable use of resources and minimize pollution in order to guarantee the subsistence of future generations. That's why there are more and more pacts and strategies that seek to minimize the impact of human activities. In Europe, a strategic objective has been set to promote a carbon neutral economy by 2050. It is therefore essential to assess the carbon footprint of all productive sectors and find short and medium term strategies to meet this objective. Portugal, despite its small size, has consistently been in the top five wine producing countries in Europe. This is indeed an important production sector for the country, reaching around 1.8 billion euros in sales. In recent years, there has been growing competitiveness in the sector and there is also a need to find ways of reducing environmental impacts. In order to respond to growing environmental restrictions, but also to greater environmental demands on the part of consumers. This work is being carried out as part of my PhD scholarship with support of research projects. The aim of the work is to identify critical points in the wine production process in order to define strategies for reducing the carbon footprint of wine production. This work is based on a medium-sized Portuguese farm located around 40 km from Lisbon and with an annual production of 611,000 litres of wine. This winery is part of Companhia das Lusírias, which is the country's largest agricultural holding owned by the Portuguese state and with an history of already 187 years. The analysis was carried out following the life cycle assessment methodology using the method defined by the IPCC regarding global warming potential for a period of 100 years. The methodology used was that set out in the ISO standards and software SIMO Pro 9 in its PhD version was used for the modeling. The inventory was carried out through monitoring and questionnaires over a four-year period of activity, with the aim of reducing the effects of the annual variability natural presence in agricultural production. Our work has therefore followed the traditional steps used in life cycle assessment, starting with the definition of the objectives, defining the boundaries, of the system and the functional unit. After building the model in CIMA Pro software and validating the inventory data, the results obtained were analyzed and hotspots were identified for subsequent improvement proposals. Since we intend to respond to concrete problems of our case study with a producer-focused approach, the system boundaries include all phases from cradle to gate. In this way, the analysis will focus on stages in which the company can directly intervene with a view to the subsequent implementation of measures, therefore not considering the distribution and retail stages. Within the defined boundaries, all production phases were considered from the planting of the vine to the final packaging of the wine ready to sell and distribution. All data used related to a four-year monitoring period. Regarding the chosen functional unit, it concerns the average packaging corresponding to a volume of 0.75 liters of wine. It is important to highlight that the company sells wine in different types of packaging with different volumes, so the results relate to combination of different packaging. The average packaging was calculated based on the representation observed in the table, with around 40% being 0.75 liters glass bottles and 43% being 
5 liter bag in box packaging. Moving on to the results. Globally, carbon footprint of 0.392 kg of CO2 equivalent per functional unit was determined. Among the six production stages considered, the bottling and packaging stage was the one that contributed the most to the final value of the carbon footprint, with a contribution of around 69%. The vineyard management and vinification phases present values around 12% contribution, therefore being less relevant for this analysis. Since the identified hotspot concerns the bottling and packaging phase, it is important to understand the biggest contributors to this high impact. Within this phase, the main culprit found response to the glass packaging used, representing 44% of the total identified footprint and 64% of this production phase. The second and third contributors concern the plastic film and cardboard used in packaging, both representing around 29% of the impact of this production phase. In order to find strategies to reduce the identified impact, a comparison was made between the packaging currently used and different alternatives. Scenario 1 concerns the glass bottle currently used, which contains around 55% of recycled glass, thus serving as our reference. Scenario 2 corresponds to the reference glass bottle, but with an incorporation of 95% of recycled glass. Scenario 3 corresponds to a bottle from the same manufacturer, but from an eco design line, thus weighting 20% less. This bottle is already commercially available and incorporates 55% of recycled glass. Scenario 4 corresponds to the Eco Design bottle but with 95% recycled glass. Lastly, Scenario 5 represents a bag in box packaging usually used for larger volumes but here converted to the same volume for comparison purposes. As we can see, all alternatives present an improvement in environmental performance compared to the current situation. If we consider Scenario 2 with greater incorporation of recycled glass, it represents a decrease of around 18%. The lightest bottles present in Scenarios 3 and 4 has a lower carbon footprint of 20 or to 35%. The bag in box packaging is present here as the most efficient with a reduction of around 79% of the carbon footprint, compared to the traditional bottle. It is important to highlight that Scenario 3 can be immediately adopted by the company, not requiring any adaptations to its production process or equip equipment, simply requiring a more informed choices when purchasing the packaging. Scenarios 2 and 4, with a high level of recycled glass incorporation, although technically viable, are not yet an alternative, given the scarcity of recycled glass. Scenario 5 was carried out for comparison purpose, purposes and concerns a scenario that involves changing practices and equipment, but also on the part of the consumers who is used to glass packaging and who would have to be receptive to this change. As a summary, we propose a gradual change, implementing in the short term glass bottles developed with eco design principles, which allow for a 20% lighter packaging. For our case study, this corresponds to avoiding around 33 tons of glass per year, with the benefit of avoiding direct emission of around 28 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. In the medium term, it would be important to produce glass packaging with a greater incorporation of recycled glass, further reducing emissions and additionally saving around 25 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. And in the future, is it worth abandoning glass completely? Will consumers be receptive to profound changes in favor of environmental performance? These are all questions we will have to answer in the near future. In conclusion, we can see that the carbon footprint is an important tool that can help producers 
make informed decisions, taking into account the need to reduce the carbon footprint of their production. In addition to producers, consumers have an important role in the transition to a carbon neutral economy, both through the choices they make and also through the need to be open to possible change. In addition to carbon footprint, it is also important to carry out this type of analysis for other impact categories in order to have a better global understanding of the environmental impact of fine production. Thank you very much for your attention. Please feel free to contact me if you have any doubts. Thank you.